believe it or not, I still do see patients in our dental offices. And even if I'm not seeing a patient myself doing a filling, I'm engaged in managing that office. Sometimes it's on site uh, with the associates and the specialists. Sometimes it's remotely through my phone or email. Uh, I also do practice transitions with United Dental Brokers of America. I'm also going to residency programs and teaching, managing my own speaking schedule. Uh, and all of these circles of my life have people attached to them helping me who are awesome but uh, they need attention so it's you know I'm managing that part of it so I think some people would be surprised that while they think I don't work I actually am working like you know sometimes 15 to 18 hours a day uh, I'm Paul Goodman the creator of uh, Dental Nachos a Facebook group uh, about a year ago in February of 2017 I wanted to create my own Facebook group so I could share implant cases talk about dentistry practice management so I started this thinking there'd be a few hundred people my own friends joining it for dentists to connect with each other on Facebook so we now about a year later a little over a year have uh, almost 9,000 members which is awesome but it can be a challenge to manage that many dental personalities in one place so uh, growing up I wanted to be one of three jobs uh, a lawyer like Tom Cruise from a few good men uh, George Clooney from ER, or a dentist like my dad, and uh, those were you know three three roles I thought would be uh, something I would fit into. But as I went through high school and we applied to Villanova, they had a seven-year dental program. And my dad was a dentist, and I really enjoyed watching what he did, especially the flexibility he had with the schedule and life, coaching our sports teams, always being there for us. And interestingly, a lot of people, since my brother's also a dentist, thought maybe my dad influenced us, but he really didn't. Uh, so I think when you tell your children what to do, they want to do the opposite. So I went to the seven-year dental program at Villanova and Penn. After that, I went to Albert Einstein General Practice Residency. That really changed my life because it introduced me to dental implants, which was my, became my favorite dental procedure. And then after that, I joined my dad in private practice in Pennington, New Jersey in 2005. We uh, acquired a small practice in 2011 uh, when my brother joined us a few years before that. And so we have two locations, four or five dentists working for us with a specialist, endodontist, periodontist, with a dentist that focuses on sleep apnea. Unfortunately, my dad passed away two years ago. He was just an awesome mentor and person, and I just feel incredibly lucky and grateful I got to work with him for 11 years side by side. And that's a pretty rare thing, so I really am appreciative of that. My goal when I teach, whether it's the residents or a bunch of dentists, and I learned this a lot from John Coy, so I get to speak to him this summer. I'm very, very happy to do so. Try to relate things in real life, to dentistry, and what we have to deal with. So in this box, I put fee for service baked goods from the Dental Amigos, which is us, and then you know these like high-end, magnificent cupcakes that if it's a Saturday or Sunday, people are waiting out a line out the door to get them. Kind of goes back to my want versus need, where nobody really complains about a six-dollar cupcake. So I'll put something funny like insurance does not cover this. This one. So let's see. I'll take a picture of my friend here too. See you guys later. Have a good day. You. Thanks for your help. So now we're off to Starbucks and then to the residency program. Okay, so typical morning for me on a Thursday here, every day is a little bit different, but already I've been up since 8, 8, 8 a.m. with Daphne and Mary, answering emails, texts, and phone calls. It's hard, uh, unlike dentistry where you can schedule your patients, my life with practice transitions, Facebook, other things that go on is very unpredictable, so you can get an email at 9 or 7 a.m., sort of a, like in a, we think of an emergency toothache that you have to deal with right away and jump on a call. You can cross over this way. So this is 13th Street, Broad in Philadelphia's uh, 14th Street. So it's my normal walk in the morning to get Starbucks. I'm usually, I was a server for many years, so I've gotten very good at holding many things in my hand at once. Most of my 
Uh, experience with managing people, checklists, systems, really working in the restaurant industry when I was 16 years old. So checklist, I mean, there's, it's become sort of my signature in our practices and the things we do, even in my own family. Went from the working at a diner to work at a corporate Mexican place, which is really where my love of nachos came from. But actually, I was, I was like a chubby little kid, so when I went to uh, a restaurant with my parents or, in, or as a family, like where, let's say, holiday shopping, I would always uh, ask to go to the Mexican restaurant because they would give you chips right when you sat down. So I really thought that was great. They give you free chips. Some of my signature things on dental nachos have been these catchphrases, deep dental nacho thoughts. And I like, you know, just like short phrases. And one of the main ones is talk to patients like people. And most of the dentists talk to them like other dentists. And I learned that in the restaurant industry. And I even use with my own patients, think of this like a, a restaurant where you don't want to eat, a dental office, because everyone wants to be at a restaurant drinking, eating, having fun. No one thinks of that in the dental office, but when it comes down to when you're talking with a patient, whether it's a large implant treatment plan that's $60,000, whether it's just a few crowns, a few fillings, it's like ordering off a restaurant menu. And there's appetizers, there's entrees and desserts. So I talk frequently about the menu options of treatment with my team, with residents, and, and with the patients. away. Goodman World, every 60 seconds counts. So I will answer a few texts and emails while I'm waiting for this. Thanks so much, I appreciate it. I'm waiting for my wife, Mrs. Nacho. They say she loves that name, she really doesn't, but uh, she tolerates me calling her that. So she'll be here in a minute. And then we'll get on to Rob Montgomery. So it's Facebook notifications, emails, someone about a practice sale, someone wants to know about the Hyacin system. So I enjoy sharing my life and sharing, uh, helping dentists solve problems, I really do. Like I'll post these pictures on Dental Nachos later about uh, there's no insurance for cupcakes. It creates sort of a, some, stimulate some thought, be kindly disruptive hopefully. And I think the Dental Nachos members enjoy, I mean I'm just thrilled at how engaged they are. And I think we, we try to make it fun, positive. Facebook's not always easy to do that. We have rules like uh, just attack ideas and not people. I do my Mrs. Nacho when you see her is actually a kindergarten teacher. and. Uh, I think of her sometimes, sometimes I have to go behind the scenes and tell two dentists to play nicely and you know, you didn't have to talk that way to each other, uh, but they get it to some degree. So I want to be that friend to dentist who kind of drags you to the gym and you didn't want to go to start, but then you're happy to go and at the end you can get nachos. So I want to be that kind of friend that pushes you to be the best version of yourself. Maybe some people don't understand this or know this is so many people message me behind the scenes and message me on Facebook about certain things that I don't always share in the group, you know, just to preserve their, you know, that's, that's why I feel is right. But I'm able to uh, make an impact in that way so quickly with somebody in Texas, and I just, I just love that. But I'm happy that the engagement is high, and that what I would tell people too is, while there's always like 20 to 30 members of a Facebook group that post most of the time or comment, there's so many people watching in the, in, the most, in the most positive way because people will say to me all the time, I never post on Del Nachos, but I read everything on there. And I think what you're doing is awesome. Or sometimes they say, I read everything on Del Nachos and I'm worried about the future of dentistry. Or I read everything on Del Nachos and I'm concerned students have so much debt. And that's really meaningful to me because that just means I've created this sort of dentist playground, and that's what I think of it, where even if you're not the one swinging on the monkey bars in front of everybody, you're still watching from the side, and I, I just think only Facebook groups could let that happen. My name on it and everything, I love that about Starbucks. I'll get some napkins. So here's Mrs. Nacho coming now. I'm very, I'm very, uh, very, very lucky to have Mary because she lets me be me. She takes care of a lot of things at the house, and she knows how to deal with kind of my constantly being turned on all the time. It's not an easy job for a wife. I try to help him turn off at <laughs> night. Do you like the name Mrs. Nacho? 
<laughs> no, I say she, tol she tolerates it. We're gonna get an Uber here in a second to pick up Rob. Thank you for stopping by. Great friend uh, and fellow dental amigo Rob Montgomery's dental focused attorney. We just uh, picked him up at his office space uh, right at Broad and Locust here in Philadelphia. Uh, I also have an office space there, not not as uh, nice as Rob, but part of a shared workspace. So we your space him. is hipper. Yeah, yeah, it's hip. It's hip and cool. It's very hip. So you wear a beard to get in there. So yeah, like, sure. got to grow a full beard to get up there. So Paul's been a client for a number of years, but you know, really we collaborate more. On things, yeah, uh, with CEs and, and education. You know, we've got our podcast that, that we enjoy doing together. Um, we met, as Paul reminds us. How, how long ago was it? I was it, Paul? Uh, ten, 10 years ago at Starbucks at Broad and Pond. I was thirty. Yeah. You were right before I was thirty, or if you were forty. So. Yeah. A, de a decade ago. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far and away, it, right? It, it's actually, but Rob, I, I actually, I, I think I still have it, Rob, and I, I was impressed that Rob gave me a printout of his PowerPoint that he brings to residency programs. And that's how I had him in, in mind. That, that almost just seems uh, archaic because there's no smartphones. Yeah, know, right. No, no uh, uh, meet in person. And there's a hard have, copy, right? Yeah, there's a hard copy. I had my car for a while. Well, I, I was in the back of my up. car. I mean, that's, how I, <laughs> that's how I roll. I just put things in the back of the car. And every time I go, I say, I'm going to put this somewhere else. And one day, I, uh, it's a Rob been a great resource for the dental residents in their first step of protecting themselves with their associate contract. So that's how, really how we started connecting regularly as I would bring Rob to the uh, residency program. It was a great resource. His team was awesome. And then they would utilize the team to make sure they're getting contracts that would not expose them to a lot of risk right. and you know as as we moved along we became uh personal friends but over the past past few years we really just have done more and more especially over the last year um because people seem to need both of us in a lot of a lot of ways i refer a lot of things to rob because it's like uh, the version in the dental world of referring wisdom teeth to an oral surgeon so as a broker or a buyer coach or even consultant or sometimes just a dental dental friend uh people sometimes think my powers are, are bigger than they are so i'm not in a practicing attorney so I like to be responsible just like a dentist who refers wisdom teeth out refer to Rob and say this is really who you need on your side as you start out and he can tell you a little bit about more what his firm does and what they do with dentists most of the time yeah so yeah but it's interesting too though Paul you know I think for us we've given presentations and spoken at study groups and done that for a long time and just really talk about the legal stuff you know and contracts and that's really uh, I think it's a lot more effective for us when we do our presentations together and we co-present uh, that between your clinical and management experience and and message for, for dentists, we have the legal that I feel like it's a great synergy. Yeah. We really truly have the whole package Yeah, yeah it's a three people. or six year you're looking at it. Kind of, it where, which way are we going? Are we going on the uh, school book? That was the best way. Okay, let me just keep going that way. It's okay. My door refers to as Paul's Bakery. Yeah, yeah, Paul's Bakery is from, from the Dental Amigos, Rob and I. So. <laughs> what Enjoy, bakery is your it? life of free Beaver cupcakes. Service baked goods. It's very much on Sunday. I want that one. Sunday. Sorry, I'm excited. Oh! <laughs> All right, hold it up. Okay, you guys. All right, good. Nice. All right, good. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry. Are we going on Facebook? It probably will. <laughs> what I'm going to do is. I want to review a few things to set up, like tell, share with Rob and Kevin what we talked about this year, talk about some of our catchphrases, and I think one of the things that you need to embrace, and it's um, tough because you're whole, you've gone through high school, you've gone through college, you've gone through dental school, now residency, so your dental life is about to be DVR. So what does that mean? Uh, what's the, who, who watches a lot of things on DVR here? Okay, Stephanie and Paul G. No, I do not. Paul G. So you, you don't you don't watch regular TV like on Animal? No, I'm you too can't tired of it. And what don't you want? To, what's the worst part about regular TV? Commercials. Commercials, right? So, 
your right here dental life is about to be DVR'd because when you want to go through the commercials, we can't even wait for what? How many arrows do you usually push when you're going through the commercial portion? How many what? Like those speed arrows that they have. Oh, as many as they'll give me? Right, as many as they'll give you, right? <laughs> so your dental okay. life is about to be DVR'd is up until now you've gone through things in a very sequential fashion. I, I love sharing with dentists and I love kind of being kindly disruptive. I mean, when you do these things, there's a lot of points of contact where people are emailing, calling, and I, I, I love running a lot of study club events for young dentists, and we just had one recently. And what I don't think dentists recognize, and, and I would uh, encourage people to go thank the person running it, because usually when you're running a study club, you know, it, it's not about the money that comes in. Many times there is no money coming in, many times there could be a cost. But beyond that, there's just a lot of effort to put those things together, where it's the food, the CE, the speaker. So Mary helps them with a lot of those things, printing things out. And um, she's a uh, kindergarten teacher on break, so she's really uh, good at kind of being supportive. So Anna does not have a Roth IRA and I will dentist it. Anna, you don't have a Roth IRA? You need a Roth IRA. Why don't you have a Roth IRA? Other people have a Roth IRA. People want to have a Roth IRA. Does that make me more or less likable? I talk about this restaurant all best. I love Steven Starr, I love his systems, and it's right in the center of Philadelphia. It is my favorite restaurant and I go there a lot. So this dental student who was so nice uh, and we were standing there, came up to me and said, hey, uh, Dr. Nacho. And he came up to me and he said, you know, I just want to tell you, I'm here with my uh, wife, she's a dental student, I'm graduating, I'm going to, to Houston. And I, I just thought it was awesome that he felt comfortable to walk up to me. I'm really glad that I've created this persona or, or this feeling that people can approach me, because they can. I mean, I'm, I'm a really very approachable person. And I was just, uh, it was meaningful to me that he brought me over and talked to his wife. And then at the end he said, I'm, I'm going to Houston to work for a corporate place. Uh, I need some advice from you. And I said, okay, you know, I will uh, reach out to me when you're there.